Welcome to 316 Ministries webcast live training series. 316 Ministry creates online sessions which include lessons for basic life training. Many of these topics are designed to help those individuals or couples who are just starting out or those in need of a little bit of extra help and guidance along the way. If you know of other topics that you feel would fit this category, please send us a message with those topics. The topic for this lesson is resume writing. How to write a resume that will get attention. So the plan in this lesson is to start out with a blank piece of paper in your favorite word processor and start at the beginning. Please note that we're not going to be teaching you how to use that favorite word processor, but we can help in the formatting of your resume along with what not to leave off. So here are the topics for today's lesson. Context for your resume. Write for the job you want. Contact information. Who are you? Formatting of jobs descriptions. Too much versus too little. Mind the gaps in the dates. And finally, what if you were fired or laid off? All right, well, let's jump right in. So our first topic, context for your resume. Write for the job you want. So it is very important to write your resume for the job that you want. Some people have a few job skills, but they try to make one resume that fits them all. Some jobs are very specific, and others can be broader. For example, a job posting in construction might be looking for someone that's good at framing, and another might be looking for someone that's experienced in concrete. So you have a few options here. You can pick one, framer or concrete. Or if you want one over the other, you can ensure your resume leans that direction. However, maybe you have both skills. By ensuring both skills are listed on your resume, this gives you even a better chance that you will get an interview for one or the other. Those options work since they are very close job categories. But what if they aren't? Let's say you have a skill set as an office worker. You've been a secretary and you've also been a project manager. If your goal is to go after the project manager position, changing the focus of your resume to be more focused on the project manager position versus your secretary skills would get you more attention. Each position that you describe on your resume should be written to accentuate the project management experience. Again, having more than one resume is not a bad thing, but you'll need to truly understand the job that you're aiming to get so that you're sending the right resume with the right focus. Do your research on the company to help guide your context. You would actually be surprised on how many people apply for a job that don't even look at the company website first. All right, so the next topic, contact information. Who are you? This section is very important as it's how the people that are reading your resume will contact you if they like what they read. So the normal basic information includes your name, your address, your phone number, and an email address. So beyond that, there are other things that you can place in this area such as professional certifications and online business profile details such as linkedin.com. Just as there are important information that you would want to put on your contact information, there's also things that you should leave off, except for in specific conditions. These include, like your Facebook link, your Instagram tag, Twitter feed, etc. You know, it's, uh, unless you're going for a professional job, which you will use these as site demos for your creative work. Okay, so now we're going to talk about formatting your job descriptions. So job descriptions are generally very specific to the job that you want. If you're hoping for a construction framer job, and in your last job you did framing on houses, talk about the specifics that you did. Remember, jobs should be listed in chronological order, with the job that you either have now or that you just left listed first. So the first item to list is the company name. This should be bold to help separate the jobs from one another. Then, right underneath the company name, you'd put your title. Next, each job description have a start date, month and year, fine, and an end date, unless you're still working there, and then you just list it as present. From there, under the dates, you'll put your job description. So job descriptions should be very specific and written to be short, but complete. It can sometimes be hard to fit it all in, but if it's too long, it might get passed by just on a technicality. Some of these places get several hundred resumes for one job. If there are specific buzzwords in your line of work, here's the place to use them. Remember, 
you're selling yourself and your skill. Using the words, I did this, is good, but people like some, we did this, as well, which shows teamwork. If you did project work, pick a project and describe it. Did it get done in time? If you're unsure where to start, a good trick is to use a different area of the document and just start typing about all the things that you did at the job. Once you think you have all that done, then just shrink it down to a paragraph. Start removing words. Make it, make it strong. You will find that talking about problems that you solved is also a good thing to talk about and how you did it. So on our next topic, we're going to talk about too much versus too little on your resume. So as we just talked about, it's very easy to get carried away with your job descriptions. If it's important, add it. But if you talk about your coffee break needs, it's best to leave it off. Also, it is very easy to oversell yourself. So some boasting is expected on a resume, but not at the expense of other coworkers at your last position. For example, don't say that your manager didn't know what he was doing and you always had to save his job. And if you feel like you have to, don't use his name or her name because it's a very small world. <laughs> So remember these keywords and apply them. Team worker, self-starter, motivated, humble, leadership, diligent, trustworthy. So if you feel it necessary to do a cover letter for your resume, the cover letter should be very specific to the job in the company. That's where you will express that you feel that this job is a good fit for your skill set. However, it is best to leave that type of information off your resume. Some people like to see an objective at the top of the resume, below your contact information, which might describe your goal to work for a good company with growth opportunities. Um, this shows that you're not just in it for the money. And something else to leave off. While you're very proud of your family bio, a resume is usually not the best place to put it. And as with everything, there are specific exceptions such as applying for a daycare center and you have five kids that you've raised. A good rule of thumb, when in doubt, leave it out. If it's not specific to the job that you're applying for, um, and it will not help sell you or get you a foot in the door, it's best just to avoid adding it. These also go for hobbies, unless you're applying for a rocket engineering job and you make model rockets for a hobby. Also, it used to be the only way that you could get your resume into a company was to mail it in, snail mail. Oftentimes, that meant that you would want to do anything that you could do to increase your chances that your resume would stand out. This usually meant selecting a higher grade paper or having it professionally printed, as that was the best way to go. Now, of course, this is the new technology age, which that leads to a less of a need to actually have it printed and mailed in. Of course, with today's word processing capabilities, there are so many different ways and creative ways to increase your resume's attention-getting appeal. You really want to avoid trying to make it over the top. Many managers will actually just skip it because it looks like that. If your resume can't stand on the skill that you represent, it will not help you to brighten it up. It is very important just to stick to the facts. Now, there is a trick that you can do which might help you get some extra attention to your resume. If you use some of those buzzwords in your job descriptions that we spoke of earlier, you can actually bold them. Oftentimes, a manager of sorts will just skim the resume and look for specific words that are specific to the job that they're trying to fill. If they find one of these words that are bolded, that job description will for sure get a full read. Now for the next topic, mind those gaps in the dates. So here's some rules of thumb. So when a manager starts to review the resumes they receive for a specific job, oftentimes there are <laughs> quite a few of them that are actually submitted. The first thing they're going to do is they're actually going to look at the size of those resumes. A very large resume will most likely be reviewed, but it'll be looked at after the manager is already irritated that the resume is so long. So obviously that doesn't bode well for your chances. A little bit of a shorter resume might get the first read, and the manager will welcome reading it. And sometimes that first read is all it takes to get the job because they're going to find all the other resumes that they may not want to look at. So they're going to look at your resume first. And when they look at your resume, if it qualifies, they're probably going to select you for an interview, definitely increasing your chances. So not every manager actually reads the resumes the same way when they skim through them. Again, they have thousands of resumes in some cases for a specific job. 
So here's one example. Once they select a resume to read, they'll first scan it and they'll look for the companies that you've worked for before, hoping to see that one of the companies that you've worked for is close to the company that you're actually applying to. At this time, even a competitor listed on your resume is a good thing. If they see any of the companies that are listed on your resume, the first thing they're going to do is they're going to actually look at your job title there. Now, if your job title is close to what they're applying for, that's another bonus. So, and here's the kicker. Lastly, they're going to be looking at the dates that you've actually listed on your resume. Typically, they're looking for two things. First, they're going to look at how long you were actually at each position on your resume. Um, if you've changed jobs quite a bit, you may be labeled as a job hopper. And the second thing they're going to look at is are there obvious gaps in the dates? Gaps actually are not necessarily bad, but you need to be ready to explain them if you get your face-to-face -face interview. Now, job hopping does not look great on a resume. It presents a track record of getting onboarded or hired and then leaving the position. In their mind, they're thinking, why did this person leave so quickly after each job? Because it costs actually a quite a bit of money to actually bring on an employee. All right, so the next topic. What if you were fired or if you were laid off? So, if you've ever had a job before, you are sure to know that not every job is perfect, nor is the company. If you've ever had to work for someone else, you also know that leadership sometimes leaves a lot to be desired. Some states are what are actually called at-will states, which means they can fire you for no reason. However, usually being fired is because of a reason. It might actually seem like the end of the world, but most of the time that it's not. So being ready to talk about it, including any other time that you actually left a position in a face-to-face -face interview, is very important. Try your very best to be very political without bashing anyone. Also, being laid off, which is different than actually being fired, is usually because of your position. It was actually either eliminated or the work that you did is no longer needed. Either way, fired or laid off, you don't have a job when you're done. So here's the good news. You don't have to add either of those to your resume. You just have to be ready to talk about it. So, in conclusion, remember, resumes done right, their only job is to get you in the door. They represent you when you're not there, and they should describe to the reader that you are skilled at your job and that you're the best person for their open position. So, once you get in the door, leave your nerves outside. Dress to impress, be prompt, or even a little bit early. Bring two copies of your resume, printed. Provide a firm handshake. And be excited to be there and show some, well, not over the top, eagerness to get the job. Also very important, review the company website before you go and think of at least one question that you can ask when you're asked if you have any questions for them during the interview. Thank you for visiting and viewing our training. We hope you found this training useful. If you found it useful, please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and click the bell to be notified of additional training as it comes available. It really helps our channel. Any amount helps us to continue to create new content. Our training is supported by donations from users like you. If you'd like to make a donation, please visit us at 316ministry.cc to donate to this effort. Thank you, and God bless.